Good evening, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for making the time to be with us this evening. My name is Erica Calero. I am the Vice Provost for Student Affairs here at the University of Vermont. And I'm joined this evening by Sarah Heath, the Director of the Career Center at UVM. Um, we're, we're really pleased to be with you this evening. I hope for those whose students were able to travel home for Thanksgiving that you got to spend some great quality time with them. As you know, we're just a few days away from the end of classes and headed into the final exam period. Um, and so just to recap sort of where things are on campus, um, we have two more days of classes, the weekend, um, and then finals start. Your students are some of them are stressed, some of them are exhilarated, all of them are anticipating some time away from campus. Um, many will be coming home, many will be spending time with friends. I can say safely that the majority are tired um, and, and all of them are really wanting to do well here at the end of the semester. And, um, and so many are equipped with the resilience and the skills to to, to finish the semester well. Um, that gives those of us who are working every day to support your students a lot of um, comfort and, and confidence. Uh, let's see, let's have our next slide. Um, let's see, let's go ahead one or two more, please. Yeah, there we go. So in thinking about what has brought us together this evening, first of all, we are we're very excited to be talking with you as one of the many ways that we engage with parents and families and share in depth about the breadth of resources and supports and services that your student has access to at UVM. Earlier this year, we did a Catamount family survey and the results showed us that you'd like to hear more about the Career Center and the options and opportunities um, for career preparation and engagement that are available to your students. So we put together this webinar for you this evening. I'll be handing the mic over to Sarah in a moment, but I do just want to remind attendees that a recording of this presentation will be made available by the end of the week for families to view. Uh, we'll certainly include a link in this Friday's Catamount Family Newsletter. Sarah, over to you. Thank you so much for um, inviting us to join this conversation. Uh, such important questions. Um, obviously, I have a biased approach um, as the Career Center Director, but um, we know, having talked to so many students over the years, that families are a huge influence on their success in college and after college and how they might be feeling about those career pursuits. Many of them, much like they feel about their finals, feel nervous about life after graduation. Um, so that your interest in being an ally to them is outstanding. Um, and so we're, we're glad that you're asking questions and excited to be here to answer them. What we really think about as our main task in the Career Center is trying to make sure that UVM students are leaving UVM feeling curious, confident, and courageous. That they're curious about the people they're meeting and the opportunities available to them. That they're confident in the knowledge and skills that they're gaining here and they're able to articulate those. And that that provides some sense of courage as they head out into the world. We know that the world of work today is not what it used to be, that they're not going to just get placed into a single job and stay with that company until they retire. Students, graduates might have up to 10 to 12 jobs, and so they need to be really adept at navigating the, the job search process and really um, being able to think about how they retool themselves and how they articulate those skills as jobs change, as we see AI coming online. The world of work tomorrow is not something we can predict. And so we think that the best way to really prepare our graduates is to instill in them this sense of curiosity and confidence and courage as they navigate that world. We also really want to make sure that students understand that success is not just the salary. We do track salaries. We want them to make good money. We want them to be able to pay off their student loans, but we also want them to have work that holds meaning to them, to feel like they are being challenged to use the skills and knowledge that they've gained at UVM and throughout their lives. 
and where they feel like they can contribute fully, that their, their voice is heard and that they're making a difference. So that's, that's sort of what we're about um, and how we go about that work. Um, next slide, please. It's really by trying to connect students to the people, opportunities, and resources that can help them um, develop. So I'm going to focus the rest of my time um, on how we do that. How do we connect students to people? How do we connect students to opportunities? How do we connect them to the resources and why does that matter? Um, and then we're going to jump into some questions that came through on the survey and then to a live Q&A here. So starting off with people. Go ahead to the next slide for me. We are really mindful that students at UVM want to go into a whole array of fields. And I have a staff of 15 people. Our 15 people cannot be experts in all of the fields that all of our students want to go into and will go into and will find amazing experiences in. And so when we think about our work, it's not being an expert in all the things that we cannot possibly be experts in, but rather about being experts at networking and connecting the students to the people who do have the industry experience that I don't have, who do know um, things that we don't know. And so one of the key ways that we're helping sort of expand our reach exponentially is by tapping in to all of the people. We're talking about our alums, we're talking about faculty, staff, other peers, other students, um, as well as employers. So to do that, we launched uh, back in 2019 our career interest groups. As you can see on the slide here, we have six industry-based interest groups. Students can join one, they can join all six, they come and go as they please, but these interest groups allow them to connect with people around their interests. So for years, we offered resume writing workshops and all of the like resource lessons sort of things that students, we know students should know. But the reality is that nobody actually does their resume until they find an opportunity and it's like due tomorrow or it was assigned in a class. And so the resume workshop wasn't getting a ton of traction. But when we brought in the alum who had some sexy job in food systems um, that really piqued the interest of the students, then the students come to the workshop. And while they're there, we can sort of pitch like, hey, here's some tips on your resume. But what re really we want to do is hook them based on those interests and connect them with networks of people who share those interests. And that opens up doors and for them to think about opportunities or possibilities that maybe weren't even on their radar before. If you're not already familiar, UVM Connect is the platform we use um, to host these interest groups. It's much like LinkedIn, but specifically for the UVM community. Um, it's free and simple for your students to join and there they can again connect directly with one or more groups that can come and go. They can do what I like to call professional cyber stalking. So we know that students can learn so much by doing informational interviews. We also know that students generally don't like doing informational interviews, but if they can just get on the platform and poke around and find out like what did Erica do before she became the VP? Like how did she get there? Did she have an internship? And you can sort of see professional pathways. And then when you find somebody who has something that seems a little bit in common, you can actually message them right through the platform. And you can see on the example here, Adams has that little banner where it says willing to help. And when you click in his profile, you can see specifically the ways he's willing to help. So we're just trying to lower the barrier and make it really easy for students to reach out and connect with those folks in their interest groups. The other thing that we think is pretty um, important about this model is that we know that not all students come to campus with a ready-made network. Some people want to follow in mom's footsteps and mom already has an internship lined up for them next summer and that's awesome and they can benefit from these interest groups as well, but not everybody does. And so instead of saying to students, networking is important, go network, we're saying to students, networking is critical, come join the networks we're building together. And come join is a much easier task than go do. And so we're really trying to focus 
um, this sort of inviting in. Um, let's go ahead to the next slide. So that's really the people, connecting to people first and foremost. Then we want to make sure that we're connecting students to opportunities. Gaining experience is so critical. <clears throat> We've all, or well, we, like we in my office, have all spoken to students who are stressed about their resume, not because they don't know how to format it, because, but because they think they don't have anything valuable to put on it. And so we want to make sure that students are finding the part-time job while they're in school, the summer job, the internship, the micro-internship, the study abroad experience, whatever it is, the research that they're doing to build out their resume. So we have all of the things that you would expect any career center to do, uh, the job at internship fair. We do one large scale event every semester, and then we also do targeted fairs in the fall when they come. We have a part-time jobs fair for those students who are like, oh, I just need to be able to pay for my books. Um, but then we also have things like the engineering and tech fair, a summer jobs fair. We have Handshake as our job and internship database. And then we also have signature events. So really trying to build on the career interest group model. These events are based by interest group and it allows us to tailor the events to really um, resonate to the industries that that interest group is serving. So the STEM networking night might look very um, sort of classic networking night where people sort of dress up and they come and they're shaking hands and they're exchanging business cards and all of this. Whereas the signature event for arts, media and communications this year was actually an improv event um, where student group partnered with us and a, an improv group in the community to talk about how Finding a job is kind of like improv and it starts out kind of rough and everybody's like, yeah, that's a slow start, but you get into it and you start saying yes and you start finding your groove um, and that practicing improv is actually a great way to practice for an interview. Um, so it's just trying to be some more artsy and more creative with it um, and appeal to different students with these different sort of vibes or flavors in these in, um, uh, signature events. We have another one of our signature events is the interest group mingler at orientation. So um, right from day four, technically, we're introducing the students to the interest groups. Um, you, there's a picture here of the mingler there. You know, there's a little uh, quiz that they can say, I'm interested in this and this and this. And the quiz says, great, we think you might be interested in these interest groups. You should check them out and they can go meet people and start mingling and they get some free swag. Um, and of course, what they're actually doing is networking, but we don't call it networking yet. It's just really connecting the people. Um, another opportunity um, we offer is the career boost over winter break. I'm going to talk more about that later, so I'm not going to do that too much here. Um, but really making sure that connecting to the people leads to then some concrete opportunities to discover new um, ways to gain experience through jobs, through internships, through micro internships, all of the ways. Let's go ahead on to resources. So lastly, that third bullet is making sure that the students are getting um, sort of the educational content that we want to make sure they have. Um, I think we went backwards. Go ahead forward to the career education. Yes. So we have two sort of main ways that we're coming at this. The first through curricular integration. So we know that the students are here to go to class and we don't want career to be auxiliary. This thing that you go to class for four years and then, oh, uh, by the way, you should remember to go to the career center, right? We wanna bake it into their experience throughout their time here. So we work really closely with faculty to embed career resources into classes that already exist helping students um, sort of realize that the skills that employers want are the skills that they are gaining in the class and out of the class. Um, so what you're seeing on the screen there with the little icons are um, the skills most sought by employers. And this is based on research done by the National Association for Colleges and Employers. 
they year after year do the survey to say, what are you looking for in your new hires? And year after year, it's basically the same eight things. Um, and when we help students realize that they have these skills, that these are the skills they're developing and the skills that employers want, again, it helps build that confidence and the confidence helps build the curiosity um, and the courage as they go forward. So there's that route that we're coming in integrating with the curriculum and then also we have um, some open access, some ways that students can um, sort of choose their own adventure in engaging with our um, content. So go ahead and click one more for me. Um, and this is just an overview. Maybe you know this, but may maybe you don't, and, and maybe your student needs to know this. Uh, so pretty simple. We have drop-in hours Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 2. Any student can walk in with any question. Um, and we will help get them get started. It's, they're usually 15 minute drop ins. And so if it's a complicated question, um, we can help them get started in the right direction and then schedule a follow up appointment for them. We do workshops with student clubs and organizations and identity centers where a sorority might call and say, hey, can you come do a cover letter workshop for us? And we'll do that. We send out uh, newsletters by interest group every month. So, uh, you know, just trying to show up in their inbox and remind them that they belong to this interest group and there's a profile of an alum and there's a spotlight in jobs and internships that are happening. Um, there might be a corner where we talk about our employer partners, like, hey, did you know this employer uh, partners with UVM because they're especially interested in recruiting UVMers? You might check them out. And then we also have um, Brightspace badges, um, which came online a few years ago um, and just transitioned this year with the launch of Brightspace. So a student, it's a non-credit space, so it doesn't cost anything to do this, but a student can sign up for Brightspace and work their way through a career badge that's just um, sort of step-by-step, -step, like, have you thought about your resume? And they say, yes, my resume looks great. Or they say, well, I don't have a resume because I don't have any experience. And then it sort of guides them through, okay, how, how do I go about getting experience? <clears throat> they are, badges are designed to be a progression, one for every year that they're here. But you could transfer here junior year and you haven't done any and just start at the beginning. You don't have to be first year to start at the beginning. You just sort of jump in where you're at and, and move on from there. Um, and then we also do document reviews, which is a, a virtual service. So a student can submit a document at any hour of the day and say, hey, can somebody check out my resume or read this draft cover letter for me or peruse a uh, personal statement for grad school? So all sort of like standard um, uh, services that, that colleges offer to their students. Go ahead to the next slide. So as we're really thinking about what it is that the Career Center is offering in ways that we're helping your students get connected to the people, the opportunities, and the resources, we wanted also to offer some tips on things that your student could be doing. Um, so, you know, some of you may have first year students, some of you may have students heading into the second semester senior year. Um, and so five general tips that we thought um, you could have in your back pocket that you might encourage your student to think about doing. Next slide. First tip, of course, is to join a career interest group. If they haven't yet, um, they should go to UVM Connect and make sure that they are connected with one or more interest groups based on their interest. And again, if they're not sure, particularly if they're early in their college career, there is that quiz, the matchmaker, that they can take to um, help them find which way. But I also just tell students, join them all, get, get a couple of newsletters, and then leave the ones that you don't like because they are in complete control of coming and going. Number two. Meet with a faculty advisor or alum of interest. So this could be as simple as talking to your faculty advisor about how you're planning to get experience or how your classes are going. Um, it could be uh, that you found an alum of interest through your career interest group and you're reaching out to them. 
this idea of the more people who you're talking to about your interests, the more opportunities you have to refine and explore those or expand those interests. There are lots of jobs. I mean, I remember growing up having no idea of all the jobs that were could be open to me until I started exploring. It's like, what even happens in the world of education? I knew I wanted to be an educator, but then I was like, I think I want to be a classroom teacher. And then it was not until a friend of mine did AmeriCorps that I was like, oh, you could do education outside the classroom. Here are all the ways. So we want our students to be having those conversations and having those realizations. Number three, to get experience. And really, we want to underscore that no experience is bad experience. You're going to learn something from every experience you have, even if what you learn is, hmm, that's not actually, I thought I wanted to do this job and I don't want to do that job. I've been sure that I wanted to be a doctor my whole life and it turns out I don't like patients. Maybe I actually would be better at bench science, right? So getting, getting out there, um, we have students who come in and say to me often, I don't have any experience. All I did was babysit or all I did was work at a summer camp. And there's so much richness in all of that experience. And so we were eager to help them tease out what were the transferable skills that you learned as a babysitter, as a summer camp counselor. So we're building that resume. Number four. Complete a handshake profile. So I mentioned handshake very briefly earlier. It is our job and internship database. It does use AI to help students discover opportunities. So when they go in, they fill out a profile. Again, it looks a lot like a LinkedIn profile. And then they get to answer a series of questions that are basically I'm like, yes, I like that. No, I don't like that. It's like when you set up your Netflix profile and it's like, which kind of movies do you like? And then it suggests more movies like the ones you like. Handshake is doing the same to say, oh, you're interested in an internship working with animals. You should check out these opportunities also. And then you can go in and save a search and say specifically, I'm looking for internships in the Boston area this summer working on um, climate change, whatever your search is, and you save it. And then Handshake will notify you when an opportunity like that comes into the platform. So really it's just sort of setting up the technology to be working for you behind the scenes. Of course, Handshake is not the end all be all of job, of job search platforms. There are many, but when students learn how to do it with Handshake, they can repeat, sort of rinse rather than repeat and do that on many, many job search platforms. And then lastly, I do want to make sure just to mention the path to career success. It is on the Career Center website. Um, and this just outlines like, how do I get from A to B to C to career ready um, with some concrete steps that students can do along the way. So if you feel like you've already done one through four, go ahead to check out the path to career success and there will be more uh, recommendations there. Let's, yes. So families, how can parents be the best advocates and supports of their students career exploration? So we've got some, you've heard what is the course center doing, we've got some tips for students. Let's focus now on the families. Just jump ahead to the next slide. The first thing that we would recommend is just to ask open-ended questions. Um, when we start the conversation with, have you figured out who you want to be when you grow up? Uh, it's a quick way to get your student to clam up if the answer is no. Some of them will say yes. But some of them will be like, I don't know, I still don't know, and now I'm stressed about not knowing. So how do we invite the dialogue, the conversation, um, by asking things like, well, what excites you in your classes? When was the last time you sort of got lost doing an assignment? What were you doing? What about that interests you? How are you getting involved outside of class? Have you fallen in love um, with being the president of the Quidditch club? because actually that's great leadership experience. And let's lean into that a little bit. What do you love about that? Um, do you have thoughts on experiences you'd like to gain? Sometimes our students have know exactly what they want but they don't have to get there. And if we can help them articulate what it, where they're trying to get, then we can help them try to figure out how to get there. Next slide. 
don't fear exploration or failure. And this is advice that I would offer to both the student and the family, um, right? To know that no two paths are the same and most paths are not a straight line. So I talk to students often also who are like, well, I've been all over the place and the experience I have doesn't align with the experience I want to get. And we think that success goes like this, but actually and most of us know having, if we've lived a few years that success is this squiggly, crazy line um, with lots of iterations. And we need to remind our students of that too um, and help them again, come back to this idea of pulling out the transferable skills that all of the job titles don't need to line up with, each, up with each other, but surely there is a pattern in the skills that you are developing that you have been developing and can apply to something new. Remind them that no one gets things right every time, but we got to keep trying and just learning from what we do. Again, even if what we learn is that we don't want to do that thing um, or that we made a mistake here, and encourage them to explore what interests them. Um, also, this idea that we sometimes um, we get focused on like the tasks, like what is the job title you want to have? But we want to think really holistically also about, well, what do you value? Are you looking for a job where you can make lots of money or are you making for a job where you can have a social impact? Hopefully you can have both. Are you looking for a job with super flexible hours? Are you looking for a job where you can work remote as your job? Um, do you want to be working really independently? Do you want to be working with people? All of that is equally valuable um, sort of intel in, as we figure out a path for a student. And then one more slide here. Allowing them to figure it out and build as they go. So coming back to this notion that the world of work is really changing and it's not only OK, but actually critical for graduates to be able to pivot, adapt and recalibrate as they navigate their career to to have confidence in the skills they have and to be able to see how that skill set could apply to a whole range of jobs and then balancing that with the interests. Like, I try, like I'm actually really good at writing HTML code and I actually really hate it. So like, that's not my right job. But how do I align the things that I'm good at with the things that I wanna do and the things that the world needs from me? As we're having these conversations, remember not to be overbearing. We don't want to scare them more. And so asking, do you want help? Or if they say yes, you know, what kind of help? Sometimes we're looking for solutions. Sometimes we're just looking for someone to listen. Sometimes we want people to read a cover letter or look at a resume and just, you know, read the room, pay attention and try to do those, those gentle nudges and those open-ended conversations so that you're really um, inviting a collaboration there and not, not shutting down doors by um, seeming to add pressure to what might already feel like a stressful endeavor. Let's go ahead on to the questions. Okay, Sarah, thank you for all of that. Really wonderful insight, great information, um, tips, and then um, I think really helpful coaching, um, you know, that, that I think everyone listening can find, um, you know, can, can find some useful advice in what you've shared. Um, and I really appreciate the emphasis on exploration, open-endedness, and working with your student um, and not feeling the pressure um, to fix or solve or direct. Um, students are acquiring some really impressive skills around problem solving and envisioning their own lives. And the open-ended questions that families can ask can provide just truly um, perfect opportunities for students to exercise those um, those cognitive rehearsal skills that they're getting so so practiced at. So we have looked all over um, different sources of conversations, emails, questions, survey results, and we collected several of the themes and we've you know we've, we've put them in question form 
So Sarah, we would love for you to, to speak to some of these. If we can go to the next slide, please. Um, the first question is, my senior has a major that's tough to see a direct job in. How do I help them narrow the field without nagging? What do you think, Sarah? Yes, uh, you know, Erica, it goes, it goes right back to that. How do we create dialogue? How do we encourage action? So really gaining experience. It's hard to narrow a field as a theoretical exercise. It's much easier to get out there and try and do and discover to reinforce that curiosity. Um, you know, coming back to UVM Connect going on the platform and finding out what did other people who graduated with the same major do is a great way just to get curious about what did people do with the major in um, so that they can foster that confidence. Um, and, you know, turn the question back to the student. What thoughts do they have about what they think they might do after graduation? Um, are they thinking about, again, those values. And we have you know, some neat exercises in the career center where if you said to your student, like, well, have you thought about what you value in a workplace? And they're like, no. You're like, well, the career center could help you with that. Like, maybe you want to stop by those drop-in hours. You can pop in for 15 minutes and do like a fun little worksheet that might help you. Um, again, think about how you're narrowing the field because maybe you have that major, maybe you know the sort of tasks or knowledge that you want to apply. And what you need to figure out is the setting or the, the how that you want to apply that. Um, and the other thing that I think is helpful is for students to see inspiration of like what's possible. So we do things um, like our summer photo contest. And I think we actually have a, the next slide about this um, where we ask students to submit photos of what they did for the summer. Do we have the next slide? Yeah, let's look at the next slide. Yeah, so we gave away $1,200 in prizes, and this is just a sample of some of the photos that we got in. Um, and, you know, we, we were admittedly bribing students to tell us what they did over the summer, but the result was amazing because it was so fun to read all of the stories. Um, and I hope fun for other students too, to be like, hey, look at Annika did this internship in Belize. Cool. Like it never occurred to me to think that I could intern in another country. What did she do um, and how did she get there? And so just by following our Instagram or following the summer photo contest, students can get just ideas of this sort of passive exploration of ideas coming at them of ways that they might narrow or focus their, their future pursuits. That's great. Thank you. And it really does help to look around in multiple ways to see what you know, what others are doing, you know, particularly at the peer level, um, you know, when you can see a pathway, you can you can dream about what it's like to be on that path. Okay, the next question, could we have the next slide, please? The next question, and I think this is one that's really resonant. It's the, am I on track question? Is my student, you know, on track? So here it is. Is it too early for first year students to be worried about career development? What do you think? Um, too early, early to be worried? Yes. Too early to be curious? Never. Um, so I love that the first year student is thinking about it. Um, and this is in the student that we designed the path for career success for. It is those benchmarks. It is could be used like a check sheet to say like, OK, I, I am uh, you know, doing all the things that are going to help me graduate feeling career ready. Um, but we don't we don't want to perpetuate the worry. Um, so I think as much as we can encourage that student towards action so that they alleviate the worry by by doing the things um, that can really help. Um, the other thing that we, you know, one of the other actions that I mentioned earlier was the career boost. And I want to um, do a little plug for that again now. Um, go ahead to the next slide. 
because it's just around the corner. So if you have a first year student who is feeling worried, um, maybe they wanna check out these interactive online workshops over winter break. Um, they're just hour long workshops. You can learn more about it, of course, on our website. Um, where they get to talk to a career coach. They're usually fairly small groups of people, so they get to meet some peers and talk about their worries and find out what are other people doing and um, is there anything else I could be doing or should be doing um, so that we can assure them that they are taking the right steps. Thank you. Okay, let's move ahead to our next question. And this one is, this is, this is, you know, I think in many ways it's at the, at the crux of a lot of family wondering um, at, at different points along the way. And, and here it is, how can I help my student decide on a career? Talk us through this one. Yep, it's a great question. Um, so, so first of all, again, that we're not like rushing to finality. The student doesn't have to decide on a singular career, right? Like what we want them to do is develop a set of skills, develop a set of interests to be familiar with their values so that they can sort of design their life path as they go in a way that feels purposeful and rewarding and uh, financially rewarding to them along the way. Um, so as we're having these conversations, again, thinking open-ended questions, not rushing to conclusion, but really um, curiosity, confidence, and, and um, uh, curiosity and confidence and oh my gosh what is my third one um, that we're we're building towards that student who can navigate their way around not a singular um, decision all of that said let me throw a couple more resources your way um, we do have a library called candid career that UVM uh, pays for a subscription to so it's free to your student um, where they can watch a video library of professionals um, talking about what they do and what they like and how they got there another way to just explore um, that doesn't involve having to talk to people but can be a little bit passive um, make sure that they're really thinking about how they're getting experience and what they're learning from those experiences. Even if you decide in the example earlier, I thought I wanted to be a doctor. I actually don't like working with patients so much, but what did you learn from that experience that you did like and how do you use both the don'ts and the do's to move yourself forward? Um, as we're thinking about experiences, I want to make sure to plug that we give away hundreds of thousands of dollars every summer for internships. So make sure your students thinking about a summer internship and if they're finding internships that are not paid or are underpaid, um, that's not the end of the line. They can apply for a scholarship to be able to still get that experience and find out if that's what they want to do. Um, and the last thing I want to be sure to plug here is the idea of a job shadow. And again, uh, I believe next slide is on this. I want to spend a moment on this because it's another great winter break activity um, that if your student is home and they're like feeling like they're floundering, like, yeah, this is high, what I want to do. I'm not sure of this, I'm not sure of that. Um, finding someone, uh, typically an alum on UVM Connect, that you can go shadow them for a day, literally go to work with them and see what a day in the life is like. Um, it's a really great way to get a sense of what you like or don't like. It's a much smaller commitment than an internship. Alums love doing this. Like just imagine someone calls you and they're like, Erica, you have the coolest job. Well, can I follow you around for a day? Do so you tell me about your job? Alums are like, oh, well, of course, I'd be happy to tell you. Um, so there's a whole, uh, oh, the website's right there. There's a whole sort of step-by-step -step, um, outline of how students can set up a job shadow. And of course, that's something we can help them with in the Career Center as well. Um, it doesn't have to happen over winter break, but winter break is a great time that they might think about doing something like that. Great. And for the record, I would love to have somebody shadow me. <laughs> um, all right, we have another great question here. My student is choosing a field where a graduate degree will be necessary. 
when we talk with her, should we focus on her career or should we just focus on graduate school? Yes, and I'm gonna say um, both here. Um, so clarity on your career aspirations is gonna help you find the right graduate school. So the more that you're sort of exploring both of those things, because you, you don't want to invest in more education without some sense that that is the direction you want to go and maybe that the faculty of that graduate program are working in and around the things that you are most interested in. Um, so really it's beginning to explore what do you think you're going to do with that degree? What's the end goal? Where are you trying to get? Will help make sure that you're also then choosing um, the graduate program that is right for you. The other thing you might um, explore a conversation you might be having with the student is about like the accelerated master's degree. It's not right for everybody, but UVM has a whole host of accelerated master's programs that are worth checking out because it is a way to save both time and money um, if you're clear that that's a direction that, that you want to go in. Thank you. OK, next slide. Sarah, who is the best person for a student to talk with about summer internships or other opportunities related to their major? Mm. Yes. So there's there's no singular right person because like any research, you want to start by casting your net wide and then sort of narrowing it as you come back. Um, so that said, here's some people that you might want to talk to. Um, some of the schools and colleges at UVM have their own career folks. So if that is true for the school or college that your student is in, I would start there. So I know that's true for the Rubenstein School, for the College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences, for the Grossman School of Business. Start with the folks embedded, the career folks embedded in your school or college. Next step would be the career center. Make sure that you are checking with us so you we can just help make sure that you're connected to all of the right resources, people and the opportunities. Then make sure that you're also talking to your academic advisor, talk to faculty whose work inspires you or who seem really well connected. Like there are faculty and students know exactly who these people are. Um, Dave Kaufman comes to mind in Rubenstein School who like any student could go to him and say, I'm looking for a summer job and Dave just seems to know everybody and will be like, oh, you should talk to Joe or you should talk to Sam or whoever. Um, so, you know, follow up with those faculty. Again, UVM Connect, look for alums on UVM Connect who had interesting internships or work in places of, in, in, of interest um, and think about doing an informational interview there. Um, I want to make sure again to plug Handshake and this idea of creating a saved search. Um, so doing that on our Handshake platform, but also on um, any platform like internships.com, right? Like, like there's a million um, job and internship databases out there going to all of them and creating saved searches and just letting them feed you information. And then you can, you know, ones that are not helpful, you just leave or you refine your search. Um, the other place I would say to keep an eye on is to know that our Office um, of Engagement um, just launched the Rural Partnerships Institute, and they're doing a lot of work to create more internship programs in the state of Vermont um, and really working on creative ways to make sure that those internships are paid and their support in finding housing. Um, so keeping an eye out on what that office is doing as well, um, there could be some great resources there. Wonderful, thank you. To folks viewing this evening, we now have time carved out for questions um, that you may have on your mind. I also want to point out that in the, um, you know, in the sidebar under the event Q and A, there are a number of links that um, will probably be helpful to you. There's a link for career in to career interest groups, um, one to career center drop ins a link to Handshake, which Sarah has mentioned, uh, as well as the Path to Career Success, um, which I've personally used with students for many years, and, and um, I have found it 
useful because they have found it useful. So if there are questions, now is a great time and other links. I'll just note career boost and so forth. Um, OK, here's our first question. Um, Sarah, when planning for a career when you know you need to go for a master's degree, is it better to go directly into a master's program or is it better to get an internship or related jobs in the field first? Yeah, it's a great question. It it is going to vary a little bit depending upon your field and what is the the graduate degree that you're contemplating. Um, but it is never a bad idea to get experience, particularly if you are still in your undergraduate experience, thinking about summer internships or an internship during the semester, um, or you know, doing the job shadow. If you're thinking about health professions, you know, just doing uh, professional shadowing, getting exposure there. Um, you know, health professions is actually a great example where we're seeing the average age of admitted students to med school getting older and older and that is so critical to take a growth year um, and really make sure that you are, are ready for the, the rigor that awaits you in med school. Um, that's going to be less true um, if you're thinking about studying history maybe, but even like in the in thinking about education, like having some more years of experience under your belt, uh, no grad school is going to look at that and be like, well, she's got too much experience. We don't think she's a good candidate, right? Like that is going to strengthen your application. I remember graduating and people saying, oh, if you don't go to grad school right away, you'll never go back. And I just don't think that's true. I, I don't think that we need to worry about rushing into graduate school. That's great perspective. As we give folks a chance to ask more questions, I'll just ask the next one um, and then uh, I have to be on actually. Um, the next question, what would your advice be for parents whose student isn't liking their major? Mm. Yes. Well, the, the first advice um, is to not stay stuck in something you're not liking. Um, so it's time time to do some exploring. What about it do you not like? And, and usually there is something, most students I talk to who are thinking about switching their major, their major has some redeeming qualities, um, but overall it's not feeling like the right fit. So what is it that you do like and trying to, Again, just have that open conversation as we dig into the curiosity. What do you not like? Why do you not like that? Are there other classes that you think might be interesting? Um, particularly if you are early in your career, if you if this is your first semester as a first year student, you have time. Um, might want you might want to think about a semester that has you taking some gen ed requirements, which are going to be good no matter where you end up, and then exploring some classes. I think maybe I'll like this. Before you commit to that major, maybe try a class out and see what it's like. Have you talked to other students who I'm thinking maybe I want to study linguistics? Have you talked to anybody in, in linguistics? You can talk to faculty is a great idea. Students don't always like to talk to faculty, but have you found any students? Do you know any friends who are studying that? What's been their experience? Um, and another great um, reason to pop into the Career Center. We've got 15 uh, peer leaders, student staff, who help us work those drop-in hours. Um, and I've more than once see a student come in saying, I, I don't like my major, I'm thinking about changing to this. And the peer's like, hey, that's my major. And then they had this really rich conversation about, oh, how'd you get there? Do you like it? Would you recommend it? What do you think about doing with it? Um, you can Google what can I do with a major in, and there are some great resources out there um, to think about uh, where where other tracks might be. And then UVM also, you can do a degree audit, like a what if audit to say, I think maybe I want to do this, but I'm a sophomore. Is it too late to switch majors? And it, it will really help you um, assess what would it 
what is the impact of, of moving majors? And then, of course, this is a conversation with your academic advisor um, who can help navigate all of that and help direct you to, if you have figured out, like, I know I want to do this major, um, what, what are the steps to actually change your major? Um, but don't, don't suffer in the major that isn't right because you're not going to thrive as a student and it's not going to yield great career results. Get curious about what else you might be interested in. I'll also, if I if you if I could um, add one little thought, and that would be, you know, um, families. You know, if you have a student who is thinking about um, changing their major, I would just encourage you to um, encourage your student not to make decisions on a bad day. Um, if a test has gone wrong or candidly, even if, you know, at the end of this semester, your student got a grade that's a little lower, not disastrously, you know, but a little lower than what they had hoped for, or, you know, this is something that they've been looking forward to for years and just really, you know, wait until, wait until we're not in a really sort of difficult headspace, um, making decisions on a bad day. Um, as 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 some of us can attest is um, yeah, inadvisable. Sarah, you answered the question that I was going to ask, which is uh, which was around the steps to take to change a major. And of course, you know that conversation is one that's really usefully undertaken with um, with your advisor. Um, so thank you for that. Um, let's see if we have further questions. We've got um, OK. What resources or advice do you have for liberal arts majors? Oh, it's one of my favorite questions um, because I was a liberal arts major and my mother is still asking me, what are you going to do with your English degree? And I'm still saying, mom, I use it every day. Um, so I think First, we need to realize there's this great book um, by George Anders that says you can do anything with your useless liberal arts degree, right? So it's about understanding what are you learning through your liberal arts major? What are the transferable skills? How do they relate to those skills that we looked at earlier um, that we know employers want? And then how do we help the student think about ways in which they can apply those skills to the world of work in ways that align with what they're interested in and what the world needs from them. Um, there's a lot of self-reflection that happens in this conversation of who am I, what do I want to do, what am I good at. Um, there's a lot of career exploration and we can Again, it, it, if you, you can encourage your student to swing by the Career Center, you know, we can hop on resources like ONET, the Occupational Handbook put out by the government to sort of look at what are some um, growing fields where we're anticipating needing more people? What are the salary ranges of those fields? How does that um, influence or inform the way that I'm thinking about what might be possible in my future? Again, doing that cyber stalking of alums. What did other people with my major, what are they doing now? Um, I think sometimes we, when we think about inter uh, informational interviews, students are thinking they have to talk to someone far afield. It can actually be really interesting exercise for students to do like informational interviews in their family. Talk to Aunt Georgia. Like what? Like she's got a story. How did she get to her job? What was her career advice along the way? Um, could be a way that we just, you know, that one little sort of kernel of like, well, that's interesting. And how do I go down that sort of rabbit hole? Strong word, but how do I explore that direction and learn more about there? Um, I think to not get stuck on the idea that you can't do anything because there's not a direct path from here to there, but rather embrace the idea that your skill set is preparing you to do anything. And that how do you focus in on what it is you want to apply those skills to? I could talk about this for a whole nother hour, but we don't have time, so <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Quick question. Are, are there a list of sample informational interview questions 
on the Career Center website or in Handshake or somewhere that students can access? I believe there are, um, and I'm wondering if Peter might be able to look those up for us um, to drop in the link, but I right. am fairly yeah. certain that is. Yes, perfect. That would be helpful. And really the broader point is that um, when, when doing an informational interview, um, two things. One, you know, being being a little bit prepared for that is important. Having having a sense of what it is that you're looking to to understand better. So, what are the kinds of questions you want to ask? Um, the other thing that's really important to know, um, and and I think this is intuitive, but we don't always stop and think about it. People will tell students anything. You can ask just about anything. You can ask people what they love obviously, but you can also ask people what drives them nuts about their field. You can ask people, you know, again, diplomatically, you can ask them about salary and benefits and time off. You know, how does this, you know, is this a career that promotes work-life balance? Is this a career where there is um, significant growth? Um, of course, families, you know, sometimes use the um, the Occupational Outlook Handbook, which is uh, maintained by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, easily Googleable and gives a really nice overview of different careers, but what it, it doesn't give that textured um, information and insight that you'll get from doing an informational interview. And those are um, really wonderful opportunities, very low commitment on the part of the person being interviewed. And a lot of people love to talk about their, their profession, their job. Um, and again, stu <laughs> students, students can ask um, just about anything and get a very candid response. So those are great, great opportunities. Let's see, we've got a final question in the chat before we wrap up for this evening. And thank you for posting the uh, sample interview questions. Um, the final question, Sarah, what are your thoughts about study abroad and career development, or should we prioritize internships? Mm. Um, I'm going to come back to my belief that um, no experience is bad experience or no, not necessarily one better than the other. Um, of course, take that with a grain of salt that if you're interested um, in studying international affairs, then maybe a study abroad is actually more useful than the internship uh, working at the farm stand, right? Like depending upon what the specific experiences are, um, one might be better than the other, but there is so much value to be had um, studying abroad, so much to be gained there, especially as we um, understand that one of the things employers are looking for is um, that, that global fluency to have some cultural competence to understand um, who you are in, in a diverse world and how you show up to and relate to other people, how you understand um, differences and how you're going to work across those differences. Um, it, it's so valuable. Um, you can learn so much about yourself and um, the greater context, um, you know, by studying abroad. So, I'd be hard pressed to say brush, you know, broad brushstrokes is one better than the other. The other thing you can think about some of our abroad experiences, like um, the Go experience in Auckland, you can actually do an internship there. So yeah, you could do both and, and that's not to suggest that always has to be everything both and, um, but both incredibly rich experiences um, that are gonna help build the resume, help build the confidence, help build the skill set, um, and, and brew great stories to tell in an interview. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, Sarah, thank you very much for participating, for sharing your wisdom and your insight, for sharing all of these resources and giving our, our Catamount families this evening a really wonderful idea uh, or set of ideas about how to support their students' career development and specifically how to how to do some of that over the coming winter break in the case of families who will be together. And again, I know students will be all over the, the map, truly, um, visiting friends, traveling. Uh, many will be spending some time at home and that will afford opportunities for some really rich conversations. Please feel free to um, have a look at the Career Center website um, and share what you learn with your student. Again, you know, 
keeping in mind that students being in the driver's seat, but knowing that they're supported is such a is such a um, an important and valuable thing that you as as people who love your student um, and and have been guiding and coaching and helping them do wayfinding in many different ways um, is so important. Families, thank you so much. We hope you'll be in touch with any questions. Um, further information we can share, be, be on the lookout for the link to this, uh, this evening's conversation in the Catamount Family Newsletter that's headed your way later this week. Thanks so much and have a great evening.